<laughs> You're ready. Hello and welcome to an that was high. Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Today I'm going to be going over all the books that I read in January. I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Listen to an audiobook, and I'm on one now. I make that ten and a half. Quite pleased with that. Very much on track for my 110 books for the year. So I'm going to start with the first book that I read. I say read. I listened. The first thing I read, listened to, consumed um, was an audiobook of Career of Evil by J.K. Rowling. So this is the third book in the Cormoran Strike series, and I ab. Absolutely love the Cormoran Strike series. Obviously, it's not Harry Potter, obviously, um, but it's such a good series. So, Cormoran Strike is a private investigator, um, and he takes he has taken on a sort of sidekick, for want of a better word. Um, and this is the third book in. So this is the third big case. Um, I absolutely love this. Um, there's, there, as I said, there's been three in the series. This I found better than Silkworm, which was the second one, and as good as The Cuckoo's Calling, which was the first one, which I really loved. And I love that there's much more, although it was about the case, um, which was about the, um, the so Robin, who, who is his um, secretary sort of partner in business, um, she receives a um, severed woman's leg in the post. And it's about sort of coming to the bottom of that and that's going on but underneath it I love that you really get to know much much more about the characters in this book so you hear much more about Robin and Strike's characters and their relationship um, as well as it's a really like gripping and gross intense um, storyline as well following the, um, the, the the severed leg side of things um, and again just as with the other books I had no idea who had done it and it was just really well done that she really weaves this really complex web of who is it who could it be who could it be and she just did like jk rowling just did an amazing job and also the fact that it was on um, audiobooks the first common strike i'd listened to an audiobook and it's narrated by um robert glenister who i believe is in is he the one that's in hustle or is that his brother because there's two glenisters isn't there is there yeah Robert Glenister, he's a British actor and he does an amazing, um, he's, he's got a really good wide range of voices, so even when he's doing like women's voices, they're not like pathetically, um, but like the, the voices he does for all characters and there's loads and loads of dialects and accents in this book as well, so he just did amazing and it was five stars and it was amazing and I really really loved it. Um, and I can't, I, I feel tempted to listen to the next one in the series as well, although I love reading them too, but very very good. The next book I read was a five-star book as well, also by J.K. Rowling. Well done, J.K. Rowling. And that was, as if I haven't gone on about it enough, this will probably be the last you see of it now. It's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling, the illustrated edition that I got for my birthday last year. This was absolutely gorgeous. I thought I couldn't enjoy Harry Potter anymore, but this has just added more and more to the experience. Now, I've done a, um, a video um, of um, how much I love this book and just a, a, a review basically showing some of my favourite ones, but I can't not show you one of my favourite ones. So I will show you now. Um, this is Marauder. This is not the Marauders map, it's because I've got my Marauders map mug on, there we go. Um, this is Diagon Alley and I absolutely love it. So it spreads over two double pages, just all the shops in Diagon Alley and the whole book is just absolutely beautiful. Um, illustrations that I'd enjoy, as I said, Diagon Alley, the Hogwarts Express, which is this one on the front, Hagrid's Hut and the Keys. Um, and I absolutely can't wait for the rest of the books in the series and also to see some Christmas illustrations. Obviously there can't be Christmas illustrations in every single book because Christmas appears in every single but one Harry Potter book. I Oh no, it's in every one. It's in every bloody one. Um, and obviously that can't appear every time, but I'm looking forward to seeing some Christmas illustrations in future books. So that was also five stars. So, so far, so good. Two books in, two five stars. The next one was a four star book. And that was Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. And this is, as I said in my reading goals, I want to read a, um, a graphic novel a month. And this is my graphic novel for the month. I gave this four stars. I thought this was so enlightening. Um, it told me a lot I didn't know and made me realise how I don't, like know hardly anything about other cultures and their histories which was like quite eye-opening for me um, I really like the illustrations I thought I wouldn't when I first looked at it because they they're not in color um, and I was like oh I don't know how, how I'll get on with these but I think it really added to the story and Sat Rappi she's such a brave strong and sometimes a bit silly woman but I really love this um, and thank you very much to Ed and Claire for buying it for me for Christmas Mwah! I love you 
The next book I read was the one that I pulled out of my TBR jar, and that was Roald Dahl, um, Danny the Champion of the World. So I gave this three stars. I really uh, enjoyed it, and I was delighted to be able to read a Roald Dahl book that I hadn't read before. Um, obviously, I hadn't read it. One of my favourite parts in it um, was the fact that the, the, the father, in, the father of Danny, tells his son Danny the story of the BFG, and I just thought that was so sweet. It was like a story within a story, and I love the BFG, so that was lovely. Um, I thought the, the story itself was typical Dahl, and there's some... Like, the same sort of harebrained scheme that comes off in the end um, with some good some goodies and some baddies um, and I love the illustrations by Quentin Blake um, I, I just think he is just he epitomises Roald Dahl for me um, and I just really liked it yeah I thought it was really sweet and as I said I was just so pleased to be able to read a, another Roald Dahl that I hadn't read before um, and loved it really good so I gave that three stars the fifth book I read of the month was did it the Mirror World of Melody Black by Gavin Exton. So I got this as a birthday present from my friend Alex and Kate. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this. I gave this three stars. I was so tempted to give it four, but there was just something that didn't quite make it a four star book for me, but I can't actually put my finger on what it was. But this was not what I expected. I thought this was a book about um, gaming and like gaming world and things like that, but it wasn't. It was I'm not, yeah, I saw it, I thought it was like a game in parallel universe thing, but it wasn't. It was a book about mental illness, and it's very honest and very real. Um, so the the the, the, um, the character it follows, and my goodness me, I've forgotten her name, Abby. Um, she has like sort of like manic episodes, and they could be seen as really hilarious and funny because the things she does are a bit mad but because the book's so real you, you just feel for her the whole time um it's very honest very true it reminded me a lot of a sort of modern day bell jar um and also a bit like the goldfinch as well um the the, the main uh, the main character in the goldfinch sort of has a few mental health issues as well um but i just thought this book rung really true to mental illness and was really really impressed with it and um, i see a lot of people doing tags about books to read about mental illness and but um and like mental illness awareness books and this has never come up um, in any of the tags and i just think this would really be a really great read for some people who um, want to read books with mental illness in <laughs> So the sixth book I read, and this was a buddy read with the lovely Brittany at Under the Radar Books, and I will link her channel below, um, we read The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. So Brittany and I are absolute Kirsty Logan nuts. We, we, um, we buddy read The Rental Heart and Other Stories, that's a short story collection. We buddy read The Grace Keepers, and we also are going to be buddy reading Portable Door, which is another um, set of short stories by Kirsty Logan. Um, and I absolutely love this. This is a beautifully, beautifully written fantasy story told from multiple perspectives so already I'm interested multiple perspectives love that um, about a traveling boat circus oh yeah and um, in, in a world that's covered with water so it follows sort of so it follows a lot of the characters on the boat circus um, but the main the two main characters are a character called North which is this is her here with her bear she's got a bear that she performs in the circus with and Callendish which I um, which is this girl here who works in a graveyard which is um, like a, a graveyard Yard, basically it took me a bit of time to get my head around that but that's a graveyard basically I loved the ocean and the water imagery because the whole because the whole um, world is set underwater like set uh, like not underwater but like with, with water there's so many things so I'm just looking I've marked a few things here so I marked a few things here so for, for instance above her the sky was barnacled with clouds and I just I, I love little things like that the fact that like all the imagery and all everything is there's another bit here as well. Oh yeah. So and, and in their speech they talk about um that they, they have like ocean talk like things to do with the water in their speech. So for instance, Ainsel, what the oceans are you talking about? And I just love that, it was just so so lovely. Um I as I said, I did this as a buddy read with Brittany from um, Under the Radar Books and I ab absolutely loved doing that. We I used Voxer for the first time. So Voxer is an app you can get on your iPhone, I've got it on my iPhone, I'm sure you can get it on other phones, and um, you, it, it's basically like WhatsApp but with voice messenger, so it was really cool that we were able to leave messages with each other um, about how far we'd got with the book and it just worked perfectly and I'm going to be using it for every buddy read I can from now on because I just found it was really good. It was so, so, so good and the last thing I've written down here, I can't say about because it's a big spoiler, there's a very sad bit in it too, but this was beautiful, absolutely lovely, four stars. 
The seventh book I read this month was Spectacles by Sue Perkin, which is an autobiography. And I, again, love this. I had such a good reading month. The beginning, like, well, throughout the whole of January, um, I just had, there was only one book that I didn't really get on with, although I'm on one at the moment, I'm not really enjoying it either. But every single book was just so, so good. Such enjoyment got from all of them. So this I found was really funny. So Sue Perkins, if you live in the UK, you will know her. She is half of the host of Sue and Mel, who hosts the Great British Bake Off, and she's a comedian and a television presenter and just an incredibly funny, funny woman. Um, she this, this book was hilarious and it had some really, really funny moments where I was like, <laughs> as I was reading it, um, her depiction of her mother and father are so good. Like when I've read other autobiographies, which I haven't read any for a long, long time, you sort of get a bit bored like slogging through the first years of oh how normal everyone's upbringing was and what their mums are like and what their dads are like and things. But her mum and dad are like every normal mum and dad. But she just made it so hilarious. So like her dad. <laughs> Her dad is, t takes note of everything. He's really into statistics and he takes note of everything. And her mum, she says she's a, 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 um, a professional catastrophizer, So she makes a mountain out of every molehill there is. And just some really funny little stories. But it also had some really sad bits in it. So there's an open letter in here about um, to, to her dog who she had to have put down. And that was just heartbreaking. I actually had seen, that was um, published, I think, in The Guardian on the run-up to this book being released. So I'd already read that absolutely beautiful but it just covers life love and loss it's got everything in there and it's written beautiful she's uh, beautifully she's so eloquent and the way the book that is laid out um some of the interactions between between the characters so like for instance her mum and her are in a sort of script scripted and it just it, it makes for very easy very enjoyable fun reading and i really did laugh out loud for some of this i, I found it really funny so i gave that four stars very very good uh, the eighth book I read was a collection of three short stories called Augie and Me, Three Wonder Stories by RJ Palacio. So this is the companion, sequel, prequel, it, it runs alongside the book Wonder, which as you will all probably know, was one of my favourite books from last year, absolutely adored it, five stars, second favourite book of the year. This was lovely. I gave it four stars because it isn't Wonder, so it can't be five stars in my eyes com in comparison to Wonder. But it was so, so lovely to read and to revisit everybody and to hear um, hear little bits about Augie. So Augie's not a main character, really, in any of these stories. Perhaps in the Julian chapter, which I had already read, um, it's got Julian, um, a a young guy, Christopher, who he was friends with before he joined the school, and then a guy, Julia, yeah, and Charlotte, who has always, he's, she's in August's year, and she's always been very nice to him, so, and it's just really touching, and I love how well RJ Palacio knows kids, and how well she, she narrates from a child's perspective, I just thought it was really good, and it's, it's like observing kids, when you, when you listen to the talk and stuff, it's just, it's just perfect, it's really, really well, and she writes really well flawed characters because obviously kids aren't perfect and them trying to realize the things that they're thinking about life and how that's not what what you should be thinking is it's just really done well um the fact that it was a four star because it was wonder related i think if it hadn't been wonder related probably would have been a three star because i did still really enjoy the the um the stories but the, the mention of august in here and of the of august dog daisy and things like that i just absolutely loved it and david you're gonna read this aren't you mm -hmm. because he loves wonder too so the ninth book I read this month was How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst, which I read on the Kindle. Um, I will insert the picture here. Um, I read this for my online book club and I gave this two stars. So I didn't love this. Um, I, I'm not even sure I liked it. I was interested in where it was going, but I find there's a lot of books like this, like something happened in the past and someone's done their time for it and now they've been released. They're looking into the case and they found fresh evidence and things like that so I thought the story was very simple even though there's lots of twists and turns I didn't really find it very different to any other sort of story of this type that I'd read and that being said I did follow the story and I did want to know where it was going so that's why it wasn't a one star for me it was a two star because I did want to know but there's a bit at the end which is just sort of I, don't, I can't really say it without giving it away, but there's like, there's just this mad sort of brotherhood thing running alongside quite a normal storyline, and I just found that all a bit mad. Um, but as I said, it was a two-star rather than a one-star book because I did want to know how it ended, um, and we're going to be talking about it in Book Club tonight. And everybody who else seems to have read it when I've been putting up um, uh, statuses about it seems to have really, really loved it. So it's obviously like something I've got against it as opposed to everybody else. So the last book that I finished was also a very, very good uh, book, and that was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, although I've heard somebody else say this, and it might be St. John. 
Emily St. John Mandel. I'll read it as it looks. So I really, really enjoyed this. So I came to this after having abandoned the book The Chimes by Anna Schmael, which I will do, I will chat about in another video but so I was worried that I was in a bit of a reading slump because I read like 100 pages of the chimes and I just couldn't get into it and I was like oh well I'll go into this um and the first few pages I was like oh am I gonna like this am I gonna like this but I turned out absolutely loving it I love the premise of the book I love the plot the it was really interesting and I love the different narratives um, at different times the way it sort of flips back and flips here and it was really easy to pick up and it just sort of had lots and lots of characters um and it was all over the place but it really really worked and it also really reminded me of The Walking Dead <laughs> so this is a post-apocalyptic book where the um the so there's been something called the Georgian flu which wiped out something like 90% of the population I don't think 90 nine percent i've just dropped something so it wipes out 99 percent of the population i've been telling people who ask me about this 90 percent. i've been lying to them so um and then it goes 20 years into the future um and there's this it follows a sort of traveling um shakespeare company who go to different towns and perform different um different shakespeare plays and it just sort of it, it really is a good representation of what i imagine civilization would be should there should 99 percent of it be wiped out and there's no more electricity and no more things like that i think this is the first in a series i can't remember but i remember watching katie from books and things and i've got a feeling i've seen on her bookshelf another book with this sort of thing so i wonder if it's a, if there's going to be a second book if there is then i'm absolutely excited about it i gave this four stars really loved it so the book i'm reading at the moment which is just is Confess by Colleen Hoover. And let me tell you, the only reason I'm continuing with this is because I've got to read it for my on, uh, for my book club, which is at work on Tuesday. It is today, it is Sunday. Um, I'm over halfway and it is just blur. It's a romance novel anyway, and I'm not big on romance novels, but the two characters it follows are like, and I've heard um, Leanne Rose talk about this, saying like, manic pixie girl, like this perfect girl who's, oh my God, that is what this main character's like. And the, the, the man she's in love with is just like there's just so much just there's just so much wrong with this that i don't enjoy like the two main characters are just crap it's i started reading it thinking oh this is going to be better than i thought so it starts off with a young girl so auburn whose name i can't bear anyway um she um she is 15 at the beginning of the book and she her boyfriend is dying of cancer and she is gone to the hospital to say goodbye to him because she's told by his parents that she just they just want to be as a family with people that love each other so that already i was like oh god this is going to be awful um so i thought oh this is going to be like good that they're looking into that side of things like being told like as a 15 year old being told that you don't love your boyfriend properly and you should be able to be around him when he's dying um i was like oh i wonder where this is gonna go and then it just like the next chapter was literally like oh she lives in texas now and she's gone to an artist's house and this artist is perfect and he looks really good with his top off and there's just bits in here where i'm like oh rolling my eyes just like not enjoying it so this i've still got to finish um i'm on page 186 and there are 306 pages in it so I've still got a bit of a way to go um, but yeah not enjoying that at the moment so those are the books that I read in January so my two favorite books were both the two five star books okay both JK Rowling books well done JK Rowling uh, Career of Evil and um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and I think my favorite of the two has got to be Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because it's just so beautiful and like even just looking at this now it makes me want to cry a bit with happiness um, so if that's not a favorite book of the month then what can it be what has everybody read in January what was your favorite book in January have you read any of these books does anyone know if this is the first in a series I would really be interested in having a little chat with you in the comments so give this video a thumbs up or a comment if you're interested and I will see you all again soon.